Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and create some layer styles uh, for shadows. So let me just create a new artboard. Duplicate this one to start with. Let's get rid of those. All right, let's just bring in a standard rectangle. So as we're looking at creating a layer style, let me just rename the artboard. Let's call this shadows. Okay, so as we're looking at creating layer styles for these, we can see that shadow is one of the style properties which is underneath our appearance area. So that's fine, that'll work. Um, just for illustration to start with, I'm gonna add a I'm just gonna add a light background then it will kind of exaggerate the shadow underneath. So let's add a shadow. Uh, straight away we've got a bit of a default shadow here. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and choose our dark color variable so that we our shadow was going to stay in the same color family as the rest of our colors. Um, I'm just going to tweak this slightly. Let's make this one on the Y, one for blur, zero spread is fine but I am actually going to change the opacity of the whole thing to, uh, let's go with eight. Um, let's get rid of the fill as well. So now we're just left with this shadow underneath. So for example, if I just copy this rectangle, I'm just gonna put a white layer on top just so we can kind of see it. Let's get rid of the shadow. All right, we can see there's a really faint shadow underneath here. So this is going to be sort of our, our lowest level shadow. So let me create a new one here. All right, I'm going to select our rectangle underneath. Let's make this one a bit more of a shadow. So it's kind of giving this more depth. Let's try that. And again, let's do this a couple more times, getting gradually stronger each time, or gradually bigger rather, just to make it look like we have a, an object which is lifted further up off the page. Uh, let's go with 16, 16. And for our last one, let's try something a bit bigger, just to really give it that shadowy look. Okay, let's try that. So now let's try converting these to layer styles. So what I'm just gonna do is lock the, the white layers on top. That's a command shift L, or you can do it from the side here, locking and unlocking. So now we can just select them straight, any, straight underneath. So let's go for the first one. Uh, I like to use, okay, let's, first of all, let's create a shadows directory. But I like to refer to these as sort of Z index. So in, in CSS, you have a Z index for effectively positioning on the, on the Z axes, i.e. depth. So obviously you have X and Y being horizontal and vertical, and Z refers to our depth sort of in and out of the screen. So I'm going to call this Z index one being our shallowest we're going to have right now. So let's go with that. Okay. Let's call the second one Z index two. I'm just going to copy that so I can use it easier. Three, four, and five. Okay, nice. And if we have a look here, now I've got color, outlines, and shadows. And I'm kind of happy with the way this is ordered already, so I'm not gonna bother with adding uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, it's already in an okay order, so that's fine by me. Uh, I'm just gonna leave the, the white rectangles on top just so we can see them here if we wanna refer back to them. Okay, so now we've got 
uh, a few more layer styles to play with. We've got some fills, we've got some outlines, and we've got some shadows. Now, when you're using these in your projects, you could, of course, uh, just create any kind of rectangle and then apply a layer style. Let's call let's say, let's give it a white, or we could just make it a, an outline. And that's obviously fine. We could maybe add multiple on top of each other. So give an outline on top and then uh, a white underneath. And then maybe we could even put a shadow underneath that. And maybe give that a group. And then you've got a nice little element. It's got a border, uh, a fill and a shadow. That's cool. We could do that. And in this way, even if we if we update any of our color variables from the top, so let's say again changing our our primary, as you can you can probably expect what's going to happen. Make it an orange, and it updates here as well. If we changed any of these shadows and updated them, it would of course be reflected in the one we selected. Uh, let's undo that. But one thing I like to do in my design systems is to create a symbol which is, acts as a container for these layer styles. So that they would, we would actually have a symbol where we could sort of swap in and out any type of layer style that we, we'd like to use. Um, and we have a designated layer for our border, our fill, and our shadow. So I'm just gonna duplicate the shadows artboard. Let's start with that. Keep things consistent. So I'm going to call this containers. So yeah, I'm just going to get rid of all these for now. I'm going to pull these in there. The, the layers that I've previously identified. And I'm just going to give them names actually. So our one on top is, is our outline middle one is our fill and the last one will be our shadow if I can spell there we go so I'm just going to give the give the fill let's give that a, a primary base okay I'm going to make our default shadow let's make it a little bit weaker let's give it a two okay fine Okay, so now I want to create a symbol from this. And I think the easiest way to do this is just right click, create symbol. And much like we were giving names to our layer styles, we want to make sure we're using a good name convention here. So I'm just going to call this uh, in our containers directory. And I'm actually going to call this one square. Oh, if I can spell. I'm going to call this one square radius and we're going to see why in a second so here we've obviously got uh, zero pixel border radius on any of the layers and um, we see it's gone to our symbols page as well we can double click through to that so we just have a look at it all of the layers there have got a, a radius of, of zero uh, I'm just going to stick in the symbols for, for a second and duplicate this a few times. Uh, let's give ourselves a few of these. Five should be enough. Okay. And what I actually like to do on these containers is control some of the, the border radii that we use throughout our designs. Uh, and I like to keep these fairly consistent. So what I'm going to do on this one is give these a border radius of, say, eight pixels and I'm going to call this small. I'm not going to give it a specific number name because I want to be able, I want to be free to kind of play around and say uh, maybe eight's too much for the for what I'm designing for. Maybe I'll make it four. Maybe it's too little. You know, it could be even bigger. Um, but I like to use these to keep it consistent. On the next one, I'm going to go with uh, 16. Just selected all three layers there. They're all being done at the same time. You need to make sure you do that because you could easily just select one of the layers. Uh, next one, I'm going to give this 
large and let's call this uh, 24 actually let's go 32 let's jump up another step and then for the last one here I'm just going to make these as big as I can make so for elements of 160 and smaller this will always be round so I'm just going to say round and we can use this for things like uh, avatars or anything like that I like to have a reference to to all of these elements so I'm just going to pop these um, on this containers page here as well so I'm going to insert those components that I've just made let's go small okay awesome uh, one thing I just mentioned there as well is using these for things like avatars which actually is not really possible right now unless we have a layer style which is an image that we can swap to so I just want to create that as well just so we have that so I'm just going to bump this down Give this the name of image layers. Let's get rid of those. Okay, let's get rid of the shadow. Let's go. Detach it from its layer style. And let's give it uh, an image fill. So let's head on to fills, add that. And on here, you see an option here for images. Um, and you can also use a cool feature in Sketch um, to add some data to that automatically. So we don't need to go searching around for an image to use let's just use sketch data tile and um, oh, make sure we've got this layer up to 100 from left over from our shadow okay cool then i'm going to create a new layer style from this so i am going to call this fill image okay that's cool. Now, what this allows us to do is, let's say, for example, I insert one of these containers that we've just created. I'm just going to create, add the medium one here. What I can do using the overrides for this for this symbol, I can go to fill. I can actually go to our our fills option here and go for an image instead. And we still have an outline on top if we want. I'm just going to. Uh, change that to let's say a dark one for now, so it's not really visible. Um, but there we go. So we could use this for for avatars and things like that. Uh, one thing I've just noticed as well, we don't have um, we don't have a an absence of a layer option. So if I wanted to basically have, have it as a placeholder layer style in here, but I didn't actually want to use it. For example, I didn't want an outline. At the moment, I only have options of choosing something else. So what I like to do here, and let's create a new one, is actually just have a completely blank layer. So let me create that now. I'm just gonna go with, um, let's call it, none with a hash with a, with a little star sorry uh, this pretty much will always go to the top of your drop down list is why i like to do it like this so if we call it that when we head over here again you can see none is right there at the top so we can always quickly access that and get rid of anything we don't want or need so there we go now i've got a component that utilizes all of our layer styles and we can swap and choose between them as we like. So that's pretty nice.